Howdy, this is Baby Boomer Tales. It's June 26, 2019. My name's Jim. I'll be with you for the next 15 minutes or so. Please visit our webpage, babyboomertales.com. There's links there that you can listen to our podcast. There's also a few pictures, and there's a picture of me when I was a boy riding my donkey Jenny, and when I was a young man holding a golden eagle I caught. Glad to have you here today. I'm calling this episode Building Fence and Bucking Bales. All the years I was growing up, my dad had me and my two brothers help him with chores around. And it seemed like one of his favorite things was to build fence. He just loved building fences and later on corrals. And the way we did it as we got a little older when we weren't little boys, dad was always the ramrod of the whole operation. He was the brains and we were the brawn. And he'd stake out the fence. He'd tell you where each post hole would go. And that's the first thing you have to do, you know, is dig those holes. Well, I was raised in the Rocky Mountains, and they're not called the Rocky Mountains for nothing. It's nice topsoil all the way down, easy digging. It is basically rocks and gravel, little dirt. What we would do is we'd start the hole. We had this big, heavy iron bar. One side of it was kind of a sharp edge that went a couple inches or inch and a half and the other end was a like a spear a sharp spear type and so it was custom made for getting in there and breaking up rocks wedging them free as we got older the way this went was my brother john who was stronger than an ox would take that iron bar and bust up those rocks and dig around and make the sides of the hole nice and smooth and my brother Don and I would take turns with the post hole digger digging all that stuff out of the hole. Those post hole diggers are no fun. Slam it in there and kind of root it around a little and then pull the handles apart and that would close the shovels because you could pull as much up as you could without it all dropping out and it wanted to with all those rocks do that a couple times and brother john would take over again busting those rocks and getting it deeper and deeper but my dad he didn't just participate on the sidelines his favorite thing besides barking orders and telling us how it was done and wondering why we weren't getting the whole dug fasters He'd pour water in the holes, soften up those rocks. <laughs> yeah, he, he, that was his favorite trick, pour water. I guess it would make us feel better that he was getting those rocks all softer for us. That was quite a job. When we get the post holes dug, then we'd, we'd set posts and build the fence. He always really liked these fences with like a 1x6, 1x8 planks. And they always loved painting them white. Every fence he ever had was white. He'd love it in this day and age with those vinyl fences, except he couldn't paint it then. Those white vinyl fences, you see them up and down. Those are nice. Those aren't cheap. We did it on the cheap. And we did it with a labor force of three boys, a post hole digger, and a big iron bar. Whenever I have to use my post hole digger around here, and I have topsoil about two feet, thick but still I take my iron bar my post hole digger and I'll dig a hole and I'll remember dad and I wish John was there and I'd like to have Don too take turns with that post hole digger three of us plus dad could get her done and it was quite a time as I got a little older dad decided he's gonna start raising a couple cows and then take them and get get them butchered in the fall and so in the fall we'd have to catch the cows now I have no idea why he didn't train those cows to come to a little bit of oats in a bucket 
But they'd always, it's like they knew, and they'd always be hiding in the willows. And if you've ever tried to crawl through a bunch of willows after something, you know what I'm talking about. It was not easy. And getting those cows out of the willows was always a morning project, and it was no fun at all. But we'd get them. We'd get those cows, and then we'd have some pretty good beef. The other thing up at Dad's farm, and his farm was eight acres. He always wanted to build a house up there, but my mom wanted to live in town. So he just had this little barn and eight acres of of hay. He'd go up there and irrigate and putz around after he sold the grocery store. He'd go up there and putz around, try having chickens or having rabbits or building a greenhouse out of used windows or something always. But in the fall, he had Floyd or somebody hay it, and it was all his square bales. And then we'd come along, and we'd load those bales into the pickup and take them to the barn, load them into the barn. Brother John loved it. I know I, every time I ever went there, he had already been working for a while. By the time I got there, he was always the first one there. He'd probably beat Dad there. But it'd take, you know, a while to load up eight acres of of hay. Now some of you ranch boys listen to this, you kind of laugh, but we did our best and it was a lot of work. Later on, after we started getting wives and stuff, the wives would come too. And I remember I, I used to chew tobacco when I was bucking bales. And I think I was already married to my wife, but we went up there and I put in some tobacco in my mouth and she went, what are you doing? Went, well, I'm getting ready to buck some bales. We got to get this hay up. Not with that stuff in your mouth, you're not. And that was the last time I ever put tobacco in my mouth. I guess lips that touch old red man will never touch hers. Afterwards, we were always paid handsomely. Dad would either take us to Silver Tips or Edna's, and we'd have Mexican food. I guess that beat $3 an hour any day. It was always a fun tradition family time where you worked your butt off and that was dad's way of showing how much he appreciated it fill us up with burritos it was a good time brother john and brother don grew up to be big strong men i was always the run of the family but i'm six foot tall those guys you just didn't want (laughs) want to cross them because they'd show me who was the boss I had outsmarted them, and I'm not sure I did. Precious memories in my mind. I love that time with my brothers and my dad. After my sister got married, I believe her husband, Alan, helped us with the hay. He liked horses. I think he still does. I can only remember my mom showing up for the Mexican food, but she was probably up there. I kid about my dad pouring water in the hole. Just ramrodded the operation. And a lot of that's true. He uh, had three big old boys. He needed to make us work. I was blessed with two daughters, so I never knew the joys of having a son that I could get to dig a hole. But my dad was the hardest working man I've ever known. When I compare myself to him, I just think I'm nothing but lazy. My wife tells me I'm not, that I work hard. But that was a pretty high standard to try to live up to. Memories you make with your family will last with you forever. Hopefully they're warm memories, memories that will keep you for the rest of your days. you got to really appreciate your siblings, your parents, your grandparents, your uncles and aunts and cousins. They're all part of the fabric of your life. Things that shaped you. Things that made you what you are today. I'm Richard Fort, and I'll treasure those times in my heart forever. Now for a segment we call the top 10 55 years ago this week. That is the top 10 this week in 1964. Number 10, Walk On By, Dionne Warwick. Number nine, Bad to Me, Billy J. Kramer with the Dakotas. Number eight, Love Me with All Your Heart, 
by the Ray Charles Singers. Number seven by Jerry and the Pacemakers. Don't let the sun catch you crying. Number six, Memphis, Johnny Rivers. Number five, People, Barbara Streisand. Number four, My Boy Lollipop, Millie Small. Number three, Chapel of Love by the Dixie Cups. Number two, by the Beach Boys, I Get Around. And the number one song, 55 years ago this week, by Peter and Gordon, A World Without Love. You know, that's kind of fun doing top 10 55 years ago. I was 14 years old. Music was becoming a vital part of my whole being when I wasn't bucking bales and making fence. It's a wonderful thing, music. Some of these songs I can't even remember. And some of them I remember every word. Well, my time's about over. It's been a good old time this time. Remembering my dad and those 60, 70 pound bales of hay. Remembering that iron bar and that post hole digger. Remembering what those juicy sirloin steaks taste like. Remembering Hazel's burritos, famous burritos. What a time to be alive. But there's no time like the present. Make every moment count. Make memories with your family. Cherish them in your heart forever. Well, it looks like I've got a little extra time. I told myself when I started doing this podcast that the minimum time would be 15 minutes and the maximum would be 20. I try to keep them to 15, but once in a while something would go a little long. Well, today I'm a little short, so let me tell you a related story to do with the barn and the barn full of bales of hay. My brother Don was probably about 10 years old and he convinced my parents to let him and our cousin Gary and I believe his friend Petey, I think there was just the three of them, to spend the night up in the barn, kind of a camping thing. And so off they went to the barn. Well, in the middle of the night, my mother was a little worried about three 10-year-old boys up there quite a ways from town, out in the middle of nowhere, spending the night in the barn. So she asked me if I'd ride up with her to the barn and check them out, check everything out. So off we go up to the barn. When we get there, walk in the barn, and all the nice stacked bales of hay, and they were nicely stacked. Dad always made sure we tied those in all tight as could be. They were just laying everywhere. Bales of hay everywhere. It was a mess. So (laughs) so what are you guys doing? What is this all about? You don't want dad to see this and I've got to get this fixed. And they proceeded to tell a story how they're sleeping up on the bales of hay and a flashlight fell down a crevice clear down towards the floor. The bales were probably, you know, six, seven bales high. And they were afraid they were going to burn the barn down because that flashlight, they feared, would set the whole place on fire. Those little turkeys freaked out and worked their butt off for nothing. But they did retrieve their flashlight, and that's an important thing. And I don't ever remember Don wanting to go camping in the barn again. That makes me smile. That really makes me smile. No kidding about it. Kindness is a powerful thing. I will be back next Wednesday. <laughs>